How I do this? Yes, you can turn the lights out. Thank you. All right. The last part of innovation. The whole point to us looking at innovating and going beyond what's normal is this idea that one, someone can make money out of it, that's one of them, but also it enhances the human possibilities for their lifestyle. And I hope that phone's going to go away very quickly. What we need to look at though is when we're talking about innovation, how does it impact on the individual society and the environment? Because innovations don't really just come with that great, here's the new improved lifestyle, everything's rosy, it's a better world. Sometimes they come with thorns attached. What I want to do in this one is just discuss a few. So in terms of the individual, we've had an innovation in the mobile phone technology and camera technology when we're connecting to GPSs, so that's the global positioning satellites or mobile phone towers, we can now geotag our photos. Who knows what geotagging really is? Who can tell me? Yep. For example, like Instagram, how you can um, put your location on your photos and stuff. So how you can? Add your location. Yes, that's exactly right. So your example was Instagram and that you can add your location. The catch on it is, in some cases, it's actually already being geotagged. Yeah, exactly. So, you can, but it's also on your camera, in the photo file sometimes. Because there's cameras, exactly, yeah. What do you think the default is? On, yes. The default for all of these devices that have geotagging is to have your location services on. Now, most people probably don't realise that. So what's the negative of having that? What was that one? You can see where you are. So people that you yeah. don't know or don't want them to know, know your location. Yes, yeah. What's another one? Think further because expand that out a bit more. That, that's, a, that's a nice summary, but think of the dangers with that. What are the dangers? Yep, absolutely. In terms of child protection and, and individual privacy, where you're talking about stalking and so on, yes, it is an issue. Some people might even look at the fact that the government now knows more about you. You, lo you lose that privacy as well. So it can be an issue. What's the positives of it? Yeah, maybe. It could be, yeah. The fact you've got location services, absolutely. However, we're sort of looking at the geotagging. What's the positives of it? Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about actually attaching that location to the photo, though. The geotagging, or to your comment, or whatever you're... If you don't know where you are, you can put the photo. Yeah? I guess if your person photo is alive, you don't have to write it down, you just... Ah, great. You don't have to remember, oh, that was taken on this date at this place. It's already there. So it conveniently pops up and presents you that information. So if you're going to go, oh, where were we that, you know, on that day? There it is in your holiday photos. You just have to look at the tag. So there can be positives to it. I mean, it's been made for that reason. Quite often an innovation isn't made for the negative. How about social media? You can give me positives for social media. On the individual here. Yep, gives you more more ability to connect with friends. That's a great great point. It's actually where it sort of rose from was to uh, lift the connectedness between people because we did have this online capability now, and it's quite instant. So, yep. It definitely helps that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you've got family around the world, it, it instantly gives you that ability to tell them in information about what you're doing as a family, keep in touch, see what they're up to. Yeah, it's got that great point. And in fact, if you want, 
it's sort of also made the world a little bit more of a smaller community rather than a separate one. So the borders of countries are no longer there. And you mentioned distance, which was great, because that's one of the biggest borders, is the distance. What are the negatives? Cyberbullying. Cyberbullying, yep, that's one that's publicised a lot. Um, fraud, some of that. Yeah, yeah, open to fraud, absolutely. Can anyone think of something else that might be considered a negative of it? We no longer have to see each other to talk to each other. Yeah. If one of the uh, points that is made is, are are they really friends? When you say it's a friend, or is it making you just feel better because you've got five hundred friends on Facebook? When in reality, it's probably not a very deep friendship that you'd have with someone you meet face to face and go do things with, have experiences with. So you could say that it's diluting the relationship between people. Um, that, that's one of the criticisms of it. So the main point you can see here is there's lots you can talk about when you're given a question around these areas. What you need to be able to do though is take that point of the innovation and look at both benefits and problems with it. In this case it's with the individual. Society. Smart devices. Now, I've got a couple of websites on here. I'm not going to go through to all the websites today, but I'll share the slideshow with you, obviously, and you can have a look at those. But we've got smartphone and tablets, which was brought up as one of the innovations, which is great. It is a current one that's constantly developing. Now, you'll notice in the URL there with the smart devices, they're saying over-involvement with smart devices is leading to depression. The fact that people are disconnected again. We've got this sort of unusual relationship with people online. We're on our own with our device. Sort of trying to get something out of the device you probably can't get by actually going and talking to someone. So I'd suggest just have a little look at that website. It's not a, a thing you have to know as complete facts. You just need to be aware of these. So. That's one of the problems that they're saying we're facing. However, if you go to education, they're talking about how it's a great thing. It's empowering students. It's allowing you to quickly look something up. When I say a word that you go, I've never heard that before, but I'm too embarrassed to ask the question, quick Google it. Right? And you can. That, that's not a bad thing. It's, it's allowed you to control your education as well and take it in your own direction at your own pace. So these devices, come with um, great benefits as well as the problems that they might be creating. 3D printing, really obvious one was the gun. However, they're now looking at printing human body parts. So custom made body part for your body. If you have to replace a bone, a hip, it's not going to be sort of generally thought about. They'll probably have to scan your original hip, get the 3D model of it, recreate it and fix it, and then fit it into your body and it will fit perfectly. So there's benefits to it as well. The environment, the hybrid car, is there positives and negatives to that? It's not using as much fuel as option. Yep, absolutely. So it, it's got a battery charged in it that you can charge, but then you can use the option of fuel as well if it needs a bit more power. Is there any problems with it? It uses more electricity to charge it. Yeah, if you've got to charge it, if it's not self-charging like a car does anyway with its battery, uh, you've got to plug it in and you're using fossil fuels anyway. So yeah, that's it's sort of taking just from a separate area. It looks better than it is, but probably is more efficient overall in terms of using these fuels, but it, it's probably not. It's a small gain at this point. But what's another negative with it? in reality to the environment. Yeah, what is it? <laughs> yeah, exactly the same as your phones. It's the biggest problem with phones, modern phones going out of date and then being disposed of with the lithium batteries. We've got to dispose of these really highly toxic chemicals. And I can imagine the hybrid cars using something like that as well. So the moment that battery dies, we've now got to dispose of it. 
Whereas a metal engine will just rust or can be remelted, even though it's a petrol engine, we can sort of reuse it or let it go back to the earth, so to speak. Now, nanotechnology. I wonder if anyone knows anything about nanotechnology. Do you know what it is? Yeah, no, you're right. It's the science of doing microscopic robotics and uh, constructions. So nanotechnology, the whole idea that they have, or the, the goal is to be able to make robots small enough to probably get injected into your body, go find a cancer and cut it out. That's, that's to give you the sort of concept behind it. They use it in lots of things. So the problem might be though, how do we effectively know what's going to happen with that? You send a little robot into your body, great, it might cut the cancer out, but now where's it going? Cancer get out. <laughs> it's probably still in your system, there might be a side effect with it. I want you to look that one up because it's actually becoming an issue. You'll find that there's various technologies in sunscreens that they're worried about. And you, you might find that out. So have a little look at that one in a bit more depth. Yeah, I did have uh, <laughs> 